Anyway, I work here as a veterinarian and I lead a team on One Health. I've been working with a large number of people on Rift Valley Fever on several aspects. And what I want to show today is our work on um, prediction, predictive mapping for the purposes of um, action. So yeah, we know the disease in Kenya is mainly concentrated. So many outbreaks usually occur in the dry lands, mainly because the epidemiology of the disease, uh, although it's, the virus is present in many locations in the country, the dry lands provide a very vulnerable uh, population of animals. There is very low circulation, which happens during the dry season. And so there's little immunity that animals acquire because they're usually exposed to new infections all the time. The impacts are quite huge. Socioeconomic losses, of course, has been estimated uh, previously. And recently we did a study which showed, of course, that any losses in animals that we, we, we observe we also incur food insecurity through uh, animal mortalities, uh, reduction in access to animal source foods. We have existing prediction systems which FAO and others have developed. It's based on NDVI, it's okay found online. But we have also found huge um, um, challenges using those systems. One of them is because it's based on NDVI, um, you know, NDVI is a product, it's an outcome of rainfall. So you are better off using a more primary uh, data set rather than going for NDVI, which also responds to rainfall just like RVF. So we think if we do much more work in looking at distribution of rainfall and temperature and humidity, we can then be able to kind of buy more time for action um, um, uh, by doing that. So what we have done is to look at up to five outbreaks which have occurred in Kenya over the last, um, let's say, 10 years. And there's a pattern of rainfall that we have been seeing. If you look at what we are calling, um, 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 we call it uh, rainfall anomalies. These are deviations from the long-term average. So you can see it's shown in the batch, um, uh, back graphs. Anything which is more than zero is a period of intense heavy rain. Anything which is lower than zero is periods of drought, basically. So by looking at those patterns, we realize that if you have periods of above normal rainfall for two consecutive months, there's a very high likelihood of you having an RVF outbreak in the fourth and, and um, in the third and fourth month. But then there's another more interesting observation that if you actually have a drought before these rainfall periods, then likely also you'll have that outbreak. Because in most of these outbreaks, there was a drought followed by two, two months of heavy rainfall, and then two to three months down the line, you have the outbreaks. So in that way, I think we have buying about three to four more months in terms of giving people much earlier warning for, 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 for action on, on the disease. So with my friends, we have actually gone ahead and developed a machine learning algorithm to combine the rainfall, temperature, land cover, altitude, soil types in this uh, modeling approach and put it in a, in a, in a web uh, page because we want to package this for the government to be using it for decision-making in as part of their contingency planning for the disease. And right now, my colleague uh, Ram Dulipala, who is not here with us, is in charge of our ICT uh, applications here. We are working with an Indian company, which we have four modules in the system. The first one is just to, uh, uh, to, to extract rainfall and temperature uh, data sets from online sources using uh, TAM, um, CHAPS, and other sources. And then the second uh, uh, module is to package all these data sets in a machine learning algorithm and produce an, a prediction. The third is a decision support tool, which is basically a matrix telling you if you are in this period of time, let's say two months before the outbreak, what are you supposed to be doing as a government agency? You're supposed to be doing surveillance, supposed to be training, supposed to be mobilizing resources like vaccines for you to use when that period of outbreak occurs. And the fourth is actually a newsletter. It's meant to produce newsletters to counties. And we are doing this for Kenya now as a learning um, um, uh, action. We'll upscale it to other countries if it works in Kenya perfectly. The other thing which we learned from the FAO system is uh, since it's global, it's Africa-wide, um, what decision makers are saying in Kenya is um, they really don't focus on sub-national level. They give you information for the national, yet when you go to Isiolo, you go to Garissa, there's a lack of information, there's a lack of engagement 
which we are trying to solve by using a bottom-up approach in working with the counties. So that's just um, a, a clean shot on rainfall. It gives you, gets rainfall from chaps, estimates the, the normal, um, the long-term deviations from deviations deviations from the long-term average, and then maps in the country which locations are having a high uh, pattern. That's a very important uh, section of the tool. Basically, it's a matrix which tells breaks the outbreak period into five levels, and the five levels are very much in line with the contingency plan that we have in the country. We have a pre-outbreak, we have an early warning phase, we have a flooding period and then outbreak. So we have also formulated the decision-making tool to be in line with what the contingency plan is saying, and then provided actions which have to be uh, done by the Ministry of Health, as well as the Ministry of Agriculture, in terms of what I said earlier on training, placing, replacing some of the things like vaccines um, on the ground. Uh, this is a newsletter. It's supposed to go out to each and every county we have um, a place where we put email addresses for the people who make decisions in those counties so that they can get information which are specific for that region for them to know what to do uh, given uh, um, um, the scenario. So that's all. Yeah, thanks. And I think um, it's a partnership um, it originally supported by DITRA, but working with several institutions in Kenya. And we are part of the contingency plan uh, team with the Ministry of Agriculture. And so this really helps to feed into their actions.